What if I told you you could get important fertility insight without going to the doctor or even leaving home? That's why Modern Fertility was created. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. Mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. You'll get insight into your hormone levels, how many eggs you have compared to other women your age, and other important fertility factors. The results go deep into what every hormone means, and you can also speak one-on-one with a fertility nurse to review your results and options for next steps. Now, my favorite part, traditional testing with your doctor can cost over $1,000, but Modern Fertility gets you the same information at $159, a fraction of the price. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash ratchet, you can get $20 off your test. If you want kids today or maybe one day in the future, clinically sound info about your body can help you make the decision that's right for you. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash ratchet. That means your test will cost $139 instead of the hundreds or thousands it could cost at a doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash ratchet. Modernfertility.com slash ratchet. This episode of Ratchet and Respectable is brought to you by Hulu, celebrating Black history always. With stories like Women of the Movement, Snowfall, Atlanta, Grown-ish, Power, Living Single, the award-winning Summer of Soul, Hulu original Wu-Tang, An American Saga, and much more. Hulu highlights stories that showcase Black history, past and present, 365 days a year. Hulu subscription required. Terms apply. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. Oh my gosh. I'm back in LA. I've been home for maybe like two days. I specifically came home on on Wednesday night instead of Thursday so that I could tape my podcast on the correct day. And I laid in the bed all day yesterday, y'all. I'm like... I'm not feeling so good. I had a cough before I left to go to Mexico and I went and got a COVID test to make sure I was okay. Like I felt otherwise fine. I still had a sense of smell, but like I had this cough and like even my throat wasn't sore. Like I was, I was okay. And I have a COVID testing facility literally across the street from me in this parking lot. So I just walked over, they know me by now. And I got a COVID test, it came back negative. So I was like, okay, like I'm good to go on this trip. I'm not going to like infect people traveling around. And then when I got to Mexico, like my cough became much worse. Like it was pretty okay during the day, but at night, like it was really, really bad. Like where I kind of got like a little scared. Then I was like coughing up like weird green shit. And I was like, what the fuck? So I had to get another COVID test to come home. And that one was negative too. So I don't have COVID but I had this really bad cough. And then eventually my throat had started to hurt. I think because of the way I was coughing, like it was like, it was a really violent coughing. So then I get back to LA and the temperatures had like a slight switch. Like LA is very dry. It's technically not desert, but it's dry like a desert. And because of the temperature change, and this happens every year, so it's not a reason to freak out, but I have, I have really bad allergies. Unlike the East coast where I can get like very stuffy or get like a sinus headache or itchy eyes or something like that here, my nose just bleeds. And I've had this issue since I was a kid. My mom was like, used to terrify the crap out of her, um, when I was a little kid. And then she was like, okay, this happens every year. Like the kid just bleeds from her nose. Right. But this is, and this is graphic. I'm sorry. Right. But like my nose was bleeding really, really bad and wouldn't stop. And then it was bleeding from both nostrils, which it usually doesn't happen that way. And like, because it was bleeding so much and so fast, I have to like, you know, cock my head back so gravity can help me. So I'm not like losing so much blood. I end up swallowing a bunch of blood, which means I end up coughing up a bunch of blood. Like it was a hot ass mess. And this has never happened before. My nose starts bleeding in my sleep. Like I woke up in the middle of the night 
my nose was bleeding. And because I was laying on my back, I was swallowing it. And like, I was choking on the blood. And then like, I ended up coughing it all over my pillow, my white pillows. Cause you know, like I only like sleep on white sheets. It looked like a fucking crime scene. It's so disgusting. So like, I've been laying in bed resting. Like I rested all day yesterday. And then like I rested all day today. I'm recording this on Friday at 12.39 on, on PST time, which means like it's almost four on the, the East Coast. So I'm really sorry about the delay. Like sometimes I know a delay is coming because like I have, I'm running around and I'm doing stuff um, or I'm traveling. But like this one, like I legit like came back specifically so I could get the podcast out on time. And it's, it's still late because WTF. That said... Once like my nose started bleeding, all the coughing stopped. So I'm like, can you not have a cold and allergies at the same time? Like, I don't know what's going on with me. My mother was like, you need to go to the hospital. And I was like, I'm not going to a hospital because like all the COVID people who were in the hospitals who were sick, the hospitals are overwhelmed. I was like, going to a hospital is dangerous as fuck. Like, I'm not trying to catch COVID, even though I'm vaccinated. So I was like, I'll just, you know tough it out. Like my nose hasn't bled for like the last six hours. So I was like, that's got to count for something. Pray for me y'all. Cause like, I feel okay. And my nose is not bleeding, but like, I'm just, when I tell you it look like a crime scene, I'm soaking all of my like pillows and linen right now to like get the stains out. But I was like, I don't even know if that's going to happen. Like I have backup white bedding. I have like two sets, but I like to keep three unhappy right now. And not feeling that great. Like, I don't feel bad. I just don't feel quite myself. And it's a really bad time for this to happen. I have a really um, important day tomorrow, even though it's Saturday. It's a big work day for me. Very early in the morning, I have um, a Zoom interview. I don't know if I said it on here or if I just, like, wrote about it on Facebook. I'm up for a hosting job on a new show that I'm actually very excited about. It's kind of like a a snack ministry meets essence relationship editor meets don't waste your pretty, the book, not the film, meets ask Demetria. So all of those things like melded into one and doing the voiceovers because apparently the network really like loves my voice and I'll be helping eligible black women connect with snack ministry worthy men as part of this grand experiment that would happen in a cold environment. There's a little bit of everybody thrown in for good measure, but it's a very black situation. So it could be very, very cute. As the way that the show was described to me, this is something that I would definitely watch and recap because like, it's just right up my alley. Totally type of show that we would watch together on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. So I'm actually really excited about it, but I have like this big, Um, Zoom interview for the show tomorrow morning. And I was like, I'm sick. So I have a makeup artist coming in the morning. So hopefully he can like, you know, cover up the look of sickness. And I figure if I hydrate myself and I have like enough ginger tea and I have decent lighting and decent angles that maybe we can hide some of my sickness. Maybe. Cause I kind of do want this job. So, so one of the things that I'm looking forward to is like, like if I get this job, I'm going to request a budget for a winter wardrobe. Cause I was like, I have to like release the fabric if I'm going to be back on TV again. I was like, I need all of the leather dresses and I need all of the over the knee boots. I need pops of fur and gloves and pashminas and all of these things. So I was like, um, you know, is, is a clothing budget possible? It's gotta be, it's gotta be. I'm equally as excited about the possibility for a clothing budget as I am for the show. There's someone right now being like, fur, Demetria, fur. What about the animals? Girl, what about them? I'm trying to stunt. I'll do vintage fur. I don't need to kill a new animal. I got to have my Bokeem Woodbine moment where I'm standing in my fur and the wind hits me just right between the wind and the curls. Girl, I want to have moments, moments. I was thinking about trying to get a stylist. I was like, no one ever quite captures my particular like brand of, Demi-ism. Like just, it never comes together quite right. People either try to like take me way over the top or they try to tone me down. And it's just, it's a, I have a very interesting mix. It only makes sense to me. So we'll see. But I'm excited about this opportunity and I hope it works out in my favor. If it does, I'll tell you. And if it doesn't, 
I'll tell you, because wanting a job and getting it is a part of life and wanting a job and not getting it is also a part of life. So I don't mind sharing those ups and downs. That's fine. From Wondery, even the rich pulls back the curtain on the lives of the rich and famous and takes a peek at the wild world of celebrity. In an all new season, host Brooke and Arisha are telling the story of Janet Jackson. She was so huge at the peak of her career. She influenced the likes of Madonna, Mariah Carey, and even her brother, Michael. She was on top of the pop world, but in a fateful split second moment at the 2004 Super Bowl, Janet's life and career took a dramatic turn. From Wondery, even the rich Janet versus the Super Bowl looks back at her iconic career and the wardrobe malfunction that changed everything. In this all new season, they track Janet's rise from the kid's sister in the Jackson family all the way to the fallout from Nipplegate when her breast was exposed on live TV to millions. Janet was torn to shreds by the media, setting an unfortunate trend for the way many female celebrities in the 2000s were treated. Who was to blame for that mishap? Even the rich has the whole story. There has been so much talk about Janet and the Super Bowl lately. I am dying to know exactly what happened. Listen to Even the Rich and Rich and Daily on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or Spotify. Or you can listen ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. If you've ever dreamed about having the chance to win awesome prizes like a Tesla or karaoke with Charlize Theron or going to space with Virgin Galactic, then you have to check out Omaze, the new way to give back to charity and have fun doing it. Here's how Omaze works. You enter for the chance to win something amazing. And at the same time, you can donate to support great causes. It's a fun and easy way for nonprofits to raise money and for you to win big prizes. Like a multi-million dollar house in Lake Tahoe. Oh, the luxury. Can you imagine what kind of amazing parties I could throw there? Here's how it works. Go to amaze.com slash ratchet and select Lake Tahoe Dreamhouse. The deadline to enter is April 14th, so hurry for your chance to win. If you missed the deadline, don't worry. Omaze has tons of other exciting prizes and experiences to choose from. Through your donations, Omaze has raised more than $150 million to support over 350 nonprofits around the world. Everyone deserves the chance to live their dreams. And with Omaze, extraordinary prizes are within reach for everyone. Hurry and enter today for your chance to win the Lake Tahoe Dream House or other life-changing prizes and experiences at omaze.com slash ratchet. Plus, receive 20 extra entries when you enter code ratchet20. That's O-M-A-Z-E dot com slash ratchet. No purchase necessary to enter or win. Visit omaze.com slash ratchet for official rules. In other news, I have no plans to leave L.A. between now and the end of the year unless I get this job in which I'll be leaving at some point in November. But otherwise, I want and need to stay put for a while. The merch for Ratchet of Respectable is currently printing. It was also currently printing on the last episode, which I recorded on, I think, Tuesday. So that should give you a scope of how much merch there is. In my perfect head and world, the merch will last for like two months. We'll see. I had that same idea last time and that didn't really go over too well. Like it sold out in four hours. So, you know, we'll see what happens this time. I do know for sure that the um, podcast green, those shirts are already printed. Cut the check. Those are printed. Interested men act interested and shutting the fuck up is free. There's one more quote that might make a shirt. Those have not been printed yet. But according to y'all, those are like your favorite phrases from Ratchet and Respectable. So I'll release additional ones over time. But those are the first three that we're going with. And the shirts are going to be in, there's podcast green with the actual logo. There's green and white, just the green with just the Ratchet and Respectable, just the words. Then there's white and gold, Ratchet and Respectable. There's also rose, royal blue, and royal purple. So jewel tones is what I was going for. As soon as the shirts come in from the printer, it's such a process. They have to go to the photographer, then I have to like change the site. It's a whole thing. Um, But they'll be on sale before the end of the month, which I'm really, really excited about. But if I get this hosting gig, I don't know if there's going to be a second drop. I was thinking I might do another one for Thanksgiving, but huh, that's up in the air. We'll try to make it work out the best way that we can. Um, And if it doesn't, then we'll just work around it. 
because that's just how it goes sometimes. <sighs> what else is going on in the world? Grown ass black men are having a really good week. Grown ass black men are looking fabulous this week. Idris Elba, is he on the cover of Esquire or GQ? Let's look this up real quick. I just saw the pictures and they were like swoon worthy. And I'm savvy, wife savvy, savvy girl. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to talk about your husband this way. Your husband, savvy girl, is fine as fuck. My God, he just keeps getting better and better and better and better and better. Unfortunately, he's chosen to keep all of his clothes on. He's definitely on the cover of Esquire. He's promoting his latest film, The Harder They Fall. They had a big fancy premiere in LA on Wednesday night. I wasn't in town to attend and I was sick, but I didn't get an invite anyway. So I wouldn't have been there. I did see a couple of my good friends who were there. Gia Peppers, my boo. She was there. She talked about what a divine time that she had. Everyone, their mother was at that premiere. Jay-Z was there. Kelly Rowland was there. Regina King was there. Because everybody and their mother is also in this film. Jonathan Majors, Lakeith Stansfield. Jay-Z produced and jumped on the soundtrack. It's a black Western from what I heard. It's on Netflix and they spent a reported 90 million. It's a big budget film. They got a lot of A-list people in there. I'm just scrolling this article because I haven't had a chance to read it yet. I'm very shallow. I just saw the pictures of Mr. Elba, currently 49, looking very zaddy snack. He talks about having COVID. He thought he was going to die. Remember that? Like he got COVID and Savvy was like on the other side of the world. And she was like, I don't care. I'm going to be with you. And then she got COVID too. And that was like early on in COVID with like no vaccine and like people were dying left and right. And I was like, Ooh, I don't know if I love anybody that much to run across the world. If they had COVID, I'd do it for him. If him had COVID, I'd run across the other side of the world. I was talking to him last night in the middle of the night when I was like bleeding everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, I'm like really scared. Like it looks like a fucking crime scene. Like my nose won't start bleeding and I'm coughing up blood. Like what the fuck, what the fuck? And he was like, do I need to come out there? And I was the only shit you could do. He lives on the other side of the country. And he was like, I, I don't know, but like, I don't want you to like, you know, die alone. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Okay, I thought I was just sick. I didn't think I was dying. And like, I'm like, no, like don't come here. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't want to like infect you. Like it was like, we'll talk about him someday. Like, it's just, it's very dramatic. It's very high strung. It's very like emotions on 10 with like no emotional boundaries, no, no limits, no, no good sense or judgment, no logic. It just, it just is. And it exists. Like it's, we were in New York. I was like, we should get matching tattoos. And he was like, okay. And I was like, that's it, okay? And he was like, yeah. And then he like leaned forward and like grabbed his phone. I was talking to him about something. <laughs> I wasn't talking to him, I was doing something else. I was sitting behind him though, so like, come on. I wasn't doing that, just for clarity. Like, good Lord, people, my father listens to this podcast. I wouldn't say that on here. But I was talking, he was distracted. I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, oh, the Uber will be here in five minutes. I was like, what, I'm sorry? Like, what, where are we going? Cause it's like two in the morning. And he was like, he was like, we're going to get tattoos. And I was like, we can't get tattoos now. And he was like, why? They're open. Like, there's a whole bunch of them. They're always open. We'll just, like, pick one. And I was like, we've been drinking all night. Like, we have liquor in our system. We can't just, like, go get tattoos. We'll bleed out. And he was like, that's so not the way that it works. He has, like, tons of tattoos. I have, like, one. And I was like, no, no. Like, we need to make this as, like, a sober judgment. Like, so he, like, cancels the Uber. And I was like, how do you make a decision about getting a fucking tattoo and not even be like, what is the tattoo or, or where are we getting the tattoos? And he was like, okay, like, where are we getting the tattoos? And I was like, don't you see the design? And he was like, all right, show it to me. And I was like, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in my phone. And he was like, all right. And I was like, that's it. That's just all right. Like, let's get matching fucking tattoos. Person I haven't spoken to for like three years and change. And he was like, you're the one that suggested it. And I'm crazy. Do you understand the problem? <laughs> This is how we operate, which is so completely unhealthy. I would never give this advice to anyone as a relationship expert. I would be like, run far and fast from a person who like, you have no boundaries with, who you just like lose all sense of like self-control, emotional and otherwise, totally not healthy. But if he had COVID and he was on the other side of the world and was like, I'm scared, I would be like, I'm on the next flight. And he would be like, no, don't come. That's crazy because like you'll get COVID. And I'd be like, well, we'll just fucking die together. Cause like, it just is what it is very unhealthy but if that's how savvy feels about idris at the time i i didn't understand like i was on the oprah shit like oprah was like Ooh, 
you know, Stedman went on vacation and, and he came home and I put him away for two weeks because I'm not trying to catch that shit. But Savvy rushed to the other side of the world and got that shit. It just was like, I have COVID and Savvy was sitting right there in the video, like all up on him, loving. I get it. I didn't get it at the time. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Idris is an Esquire and he looks fucking amazing. That's the point of this. The Rock is on the cover of Vanity Fair looking all sorts of snackalicious. Just wide and fine and grown and ooh. I saw some video outtake of the shoot and they asked him, what, like, what is his greatest priority? What is his greatest achievement? Something like that. And he said, being a father. And I knew before he answered, he took a moment to think about it. And I was like, oh, I know what his answer is going to be because I follow him on, on Instagram. He says, I love being daddy to my youngest girls. He has two small daughters. And then being a father to all of his children. He has an older daughter who I believe she's still in college. But The Rock is just sitting there looking like all kinds of just broad, big body, fine. Just, just fine. Woo, child. That's a lot of fine, man. Grown fine. All the, the, um, the quotes that I've seen for the article are basically The Rock talk about being a grown ass man. He talks about some beef he had with Vin Diesel. Something to do with the Fast and Furious franchise and allegedly, <coughs> excuse me, allegedly Vin Diesel acting a whole ass on set, which set off this public conflict between them. And more grown ass black man news. Steve Harvey, his new stylist has been dressing the hell out of him. I was scrolling on Facebook the other day and Essence had done a story about Steve Harvey and his fashion and the readers did not like it. Many of the readers did not like it at all. They were just like, he's dressing too young. Steve has that young wife and he's trying to keep up with her and he's dressing inappropriately. He needs to dress like a man his age. And I was like, with all due respect to the Marge, I was like, Marge is 57. I think Steve is 64. It's not like he went and got, you know, like a 30 something year old, even a 40 something year old in comparison to his age, in comparison to 60 something, that would be very young. But I was like, no, he got like an age appropriate wife. But you know, Marge likes to stunt and apparently Steve likes to stunt too which Marge told us about a while ago. Remember I was talking about probably something like Marge doing her like over the top Christmas situation with the trees and the deer. And she said something, she was like, Oh no, like that's Steve's idea. Steve was like, I want one of those big old, like this department store holiday trees. And she was like, that's why I do it. Cause my husband likes it. And I was like, Oh, Steve, Steve enjoys a stunt as well. But Steve clearly went and got a new stylist. I'm scrolling through my Instagram trying to find a stylist's name because I wanted to give the man a shout out. He's doing good, good, good work. His stylist is at Ellie30. Ellie, I'm going to butcher his name. I'm going to just spell his last name so y'all don't make fun of me for the way I pronounced it. It's K-A-R-M-O-H. It's at Ellie, E-L-L-Y 30 on Instagram. And he is the stylist to Mr. Steve Harvey. I'm reading what he listed. The stylist to Mr. Steve Harvey and Mr. Tyler Perry. Okay. But I like the way that he's been dressing Steve. I mean, Steve's always been doing a little extra and the internet has made some fun of Steve for his extraness lately. He had on an all green outfit. We talked about that last week. So there's another picture of Steve. He had on an all lavender outfit. I think the outfit is beautiful. It's a lavender suit with a pink dress shirt and, and a matching pink tie. The shirt and the tie are the same. And then a powder blue overcoat. It looks beautiful to me. Like it's a beautiful expression of color. It is, it is very fabric released. I liked it lots. But people keep making fun of Steve. They say he looks like a superhero. There's another picture of Steve. This is the one that was on the Essence page where people are like, Steve is doing the most right now. Like dress, a man, dress like a man your age. He has on some black leather pants. They're, um, they're very fitted. We're going to come back to that. He has on a black turtleneck. It's a nice texture to contrast with the leather. And then he has on a jacket. I can't tell if that's leather or denim. It looks like a royal blue denim jacket, but I believe it's leather. Steve has his collar popped. And so a lot of people were talking about this one on the Essence thing, and they said, no, they didn't like this. Steve's pants are... Um, a little snug. I can see a little bit more of Steve than I'm accustomed to seeing. If you understand what I mean, it looks like one of them boys we be posting for snack ministry where we talk about the nature in the background and, and his hairline and the home decor or, or anything, but 
the thing that we all see. I'm seeing a lot of Steve in this picture that I don't, I don't know if I need to see this much of uncle. It's not a bad outfit. It's just, it's more uncle than I needed to see. But I think he looks very nice. Steve looks happy in his, his little outfit. I first noticed he had a new stylist. He had on this all denim outfit, like a denim shirt, denim pants, denim blazer. Very well cut. It was Dolce & Gabbana. So it was a good coin spent. I was like, oh, Steve got on his denim uncle suit. I'm not mad at Steve's denim uncle suit. He looked cute. He felt cute. You could tell by the way he walked. He, had, he was walking all upright. He had a smile, big old smile. His dimple popped out. I was like, okay, Steve. You got to go on this stylist page because he has all the good stuff. Steve has on this, um, it's a black and white trench coat, I believe. It is fabulous. He looks good. But my favorite thing about Steve is not his outfit. I'll tell you what Steve's biggest flex was for the last week. It's not the clothes. And Steve said it too. It was Marjorie's birthday and he went over to Paris to hang out with her and they were just walking around looking cute and cuddling in the city. But Steve wrote this caption and I meant to mention it then, but I didn't. But it's so important to me that I want to come back and say it now. He said of his wife, he said, you my biggest flex. Which he ain't lying. I told y'all, if we can't dress up like superheroes and, and dance on a roof or dance anywhere and do a five-part dip. My mother was looking at Marjorie's page earlier today. I said, Mommy, they were dancing and on the rooftop. There was a five-part dip, and my mom saw the video. She said, that's not dancing. I said, Mommy, what is that? And she said, we used to call that. <laughs> my mother is usually a lady. She's very like Oprah mixed with Claire Huxtable. I don't know if she's been drinking in her retirement or, or what, but she, she used some language my mother doesn't usually use. And I'll just say that she said that they looked like they were um, dry humping. She used a different word. I said, Mommy, I'm not one of your little friends. You don't use that language when you speak to me. You say that for your friends. And she said, Demetria. I said, no, I'm not one of your little friends. Don't you use that language when you speak to me. Use, use your mom language. She's like, Demetria, you're just being. No, you're just being inappropriate, Camille. And then she got upset. She was like, I am mom. You don't call me that. Okay, all right, all right. Well, you don't talk reckless to me. Have some decency. I had wine. Okay, now I'm just moving along. Okay. Last but not least in grown man flexes, Bun B. He did an interview. I don't remember who he was talking to, y'all. I'm sorry. But he was talking about Jay-Z in the big pimping video. And he was talking about, like, Pimp C, how he didn't want to go to Trinidad to shoot the big pimping video. And like, you know, Jay-Z and Dame. And I think it was Hype Williams who shot that, that um, video. They went to Trinidad, and it was like a big video at the time. It was a big, like, they spent like a million dollars. They had all these beautiful girls in Trinidad for Carnival. And Pimp C was like, nah, B, I'm not leaving Texas to go to Trinidad. I, I ain't doing that shit. And they were like, well, how are you going to be in the video? And he was like, well, I guess I'm not. Like, y'all enjoy that. And they were like, all right, all right, all right, come on. Like, you got to be in this video. So they did a backup shoot in Miami. So Pimp C showed up for that. And Bun B is telling the story. He said, yeah, well, Pimp C showed up and he had on a fur. He and his lady in the video. She had on a white fur with a white fur hat. And Pimp C had on a floor length black fur in Miami in 90 degree heat. So Jay-Z said to Pimp C and he was like, bruh, like it's hot. You got on fur in Miami and all this heat. And Pimp C said to Jay-Z, TV ain't got no temperature. And he strolled off. And in Bun B's retelling, he said Jay-Z just watched him go. And he was like, that nigga is a star. <laughs> That's not the best part of the interview. So, Pimp C, so Bun B is talking about Pimp C. And he was like, you know, Pimp C, you know, he you know, pulled up in this Mercedes and he had this fur and his lady had this fur. And he just like, you know, stunned. And, and Bun B was like, you know, that's not really what I do. Like, I'm more of a low key dude. Like, I make a lot of money, but like, I don't need to like show my money. He was like, showing my money. He was like, that's what my wife do. <laughs> and I was like, sir, sir, you sit at this microphone talking that big man talk. I like that talk. Showing my money is what my wife do. Woo, 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 woo. I love big man talk. Like, yo, flex your wife, sir. Flex your wife. I sit on social media all day and I listen to these men. Not all of them, some of them. It's always the single ones because people who's actually in relationships don't really be having these conversations. They just go on and like live their lives and have great orgasms or the people in happy ones at least. But like guys sit on the internet sometimes and they talk about like 
I want this big piece of chicken served on a non-paper plate and it's got to be round and she got to serve me before the kids and just all this like nonsense. And I was like, sirs, 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 you could get this treatment easy if you treat your lady right. Bun B talk about my money looks better on my wife. That man is getting the big piece of chicken. The same thing with Uncle Steve. You out here telling the world about your wife. She is my greatest flex. Steve getting whatever he want in that house. Steve is happy. Steve is happy. You don't see Steve Harvey walking around demanding people tell him, I'm the leader. I'm the alpha man. This woman got to do what I say. No, no, no. You create a nice environment for your woman where she feels nice and safe and happy and healthy where she can flourish. And you find that she'll do some nice, happy, and flourishing things. She'll take care of you. She'll take care of the house. She'll take care of the family. I keep seeing people talk about women needing to be in their divine feminine. You don't have to teach women how to do that. What you need to do is create safe spaces for women to be that. It just happens. Do your part. You'd be amazed how easy it is to get the treatment that you so desire. Ah. <sighs> I got to get out of this like freaking love haze. Who, who am I? I'm just all like breezy and joyful and optimistic and shit. Like, ugh, I don't know this person anymore. Keeping things fresh in the gym is the best way to keep from burning out. Peloton is pushing you further with so much new on the Peloton bike and Peloton bike plus new classes, new music, new ways to keep your workouts fun and motivating. It's easier to stick to your goals when you keep your workouts interesting. Peloton has a workout for every goal, day, and mood. De-stress from a long day with 30 minutes of strength and 20 minutes of cardio. Or do a quick 15-minute total body class before work. That's my favorite time to work out. Stay motivated while having fun with bike workouts, yoga, meditation, dance, cardio, and more, including boxing. Peloton is stepping into the ring with its newest discipline, no gloves needed. Even if you've never boxed before, these classes will have you working up a sweat while working on the fundamentals of form, footwork, and fun combos that will keep you on your toes. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. That's O-N-E-P-E-L-O-T-O-N.com. What interferes with your happiness? Is something preventing you from achieving your goals? If so, so many people can relate, self-included. And if you want help, check out betterhelp.com slash ratchet. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You'll connect in a safe and private online environment and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. Now, to be clear, BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video and phone sessions. My favorite part, you can get the help you need all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash ratchet. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ratchet. Good Chop is America's online butcher. With Good Chop, you get flexible monthly subscription plans for high quality American meat and seafood. Good Chop offers convenient contact-free delivery right to your doorstep. There's something for everyone. Mouth-watering ribeyes, flavorful T-bones, wild-caught salmon, tender chicken breasts, and so much more. Good Chop sources only the good stuff and prides itself on sourcing beef that comes with no antibiotics or added hormones ever. Good Chop is so confident that you'll love their beef, chicken, seafood, or pork products that they offer an 100% money-back guarantee. Love Good Chop or get your money back. Now, you know how much I hate going to the grocery store. Good Chop makes sure I have the quality seafood that I love without ever having to stand in line. Go to goodchop.com slash ratchet100 and use code ratchet100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. 
That's goodshop.com slash ratchet100. Code ratchet100 for $100 off your first three boxes. Good Shop, America's online butcher. In other news, I've been crying over like the weirdest shit lately because I laid in bed all day yesterday because I wasn't feeling well and I watched season two of Wu-Tang. The first time I tried to watch it, I just couldn't get into it and I was like, oh, I'll go back to it and I'll just catch up when there's a bunch of episodes and do a binge, which is exactly what I did yesterday. They're up to episode eight of the new season. It's wonderful. It's so wonderful, which I thought the first season was wonderful, but season two is like, it's equally as wonderful as season one. I have found myself genuinely crying big fat tears of joy and relief watching this Wu-Tang saga. Like these dudes got so many goddamn problems just trying to to form Wu-Tang. Obstacles on obstacles next to obstacles beyond obstacles times obstacles. It is a miracle that Wu-Tang ever came together. Between like Bobby about to get locked up, between Dennis, aka D Lover, aka Ghostface, refusing to rap. Like, Ghostface, I think, is one of the greatest rappers alive. Like, in, like, the Pantheon with, like, Jay-Z and Nas and Biggie and Andre 3K. Like, I love Ghostface. Nigga didn't want to rap. He had to be talked into it on multiple occasions. He was like, nah, I'm just going to sell drugs. They finally put a studio together, which was an ordeal in and of itself. He's scared to rap. He sees the professional booth, the setup, the microphone, the pressure. He can't sit in the room and write his lyrics like everyone else. He got to go home and hold his baby so he can get like his love flowing. You know, Ghostface is very loving and had a lot of feelings and whatnot. Like it was an ordeal to get Ghostface to actually get on a microphone. And I was like, sir, sir, like I know how the story ends. I know that we eventually get Supreme clientele. But watching him get to this point, I was like, I have never seen one man more in his own fucking way than anyone else. Just, it just, oh God. Oh, I know it sounds crazy. If you want to have a good and pure cry, like you're watching This Is Us, season two of Wu-Tang on Hulu. It's ridiculously emotional. It's really great storytelling. I had no idea they had that many problems in their lives. Like the dude, I, I, there's so many Wu-Tang members. I still don't know all of their names. The dude... They shot up Ghostface house in like the first season, which actually happened in real life, I think is the same dude that built Ghostface baby's crib because Ghostface couldn't pull it together. He was nervous about the baby. He was nervous about like the responsibilities of being a dad and his girl moving to New York. He said he had everything set up and he didn't like he was just all over the place and just couldn't function and like put the springs in wrong for the crib and couldn't figure it out. And then like the dude that once shot up his house, like built his crib and I sat there and wept about it. If you like to see men have emotions, which, you know, they never display them really here, right? They just like do random shit for each other. Cause that's men's expression of love. Like women will be like, girl, I love you so much and give you a hug. Men just, you know, sell their car to finance your studio or build your crib after they shot up your crib. Hold your gun to get you in the club. Or smoke weed with your landlady so y'all don't get evicted. It's just a big love fest. They're just so full of love and joy. It's so sweet. It's wonderful. Speaking of people with feelings, I listened to the new Adele song. She released her single yesterday. She dropped a video with the song. We talked about Adele last week and she said that I'm not trying to do like another version of, of hello. I don't want to do a big ballot. Like I'm playing small because the big ballots bring too much attention and too much fame. And I don't want that, but she released this very heartfelt song. It is definitely like she said, not a big ballot, but it's a beautiful song. And Adele has a gorgeous voice. It was okay. I saw a lot of people online saying it was okay, but I also saw a lot of other people saying they just like were falling the fuck out about it. There was a couple lines in the song that they were just like, oh my God, there's particularly a line that she says, um, you can't deny how hard I've tried. I changed who I was to put you both first. I think she's referring to her husband and her child. And then she says, now I give up. 
I saw that line quoted a bunch of different places with people who were, um, who were talking about it. This woman said, I don't even have a starter husband referring to Adele's ex. She said, I don't even have a starter husband and I'm in my feelings. I love the blacks. I don't know. I was a little scared to listen to it. Cause I told you like Adele in both of those Vogue articles, she was like, this album is not about my divorce. And then like the, both the journalists were like, this album is totally about her divorce. And I was like, am I going to be okay listening to this? I think that I'm like healed and in a really good place and have like totally moved on. And then remember I told y'all, like I said that to my dad and he was like, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. Got a little bit more, a little bit more to go. Just a little bit more. You're almost there. And I was like, really? No, I feel like I'm good. And he was like, no, no, not yet. And I was like, really? Uh, but that was like three or four months ago. Like I've really done a lot of self work in the last, the last few months, but also like over the last, like, I guess like, when did I leave? 2017. So like three and a half years, like I've done a lot of work during that time. So I feel like I'm, I'm good. So I listened to the song and I watched the video and I'll be honest with y'all. I felt nothing. And I felt so good about it. Cause I was like, Oh God, like, cause I thought I was going to fall apart. And I didn't. And I was like, oh, this is really, really good. Like, you have progressed, madam. Like, maybe you've met, like, 100% healing. You know what I think it was? I told you I ran into my ex when I was in New York. Not, like, not just my ex, like, the one that I, like, was like, hi. And he was like, hey. And I was like, I'm in your city. And then, like, he sent me his whole itinerary. And, and I was like, lunch tomorrow? And he was like, dinner tonight. And I was like, I can't. I have a dinner. And he was like, cancel on that nigga. Like, not that ex. Like, the ex. Like, the ex-husband. I ran into him when I was in New York. I was at a block party. I was hanging out in bed I was with like a couple of my friends. Like I was, you know, I was just, it was like a regular weekend in New York. Like I felt like I was at home. And my plane was leaving at 1045. And so I was like, well, I'll leave the block party at like 730. And I'll take an Uber back to the city to pick up my stuff in Tribeca. And then the ex, as in the boyfriend, not as in the husband, was meeting me to pick me up and drive me to the airport. And so it was like 725 and I looked up and looked around and like he was right there, the ex-husband. And I was like, oh, and like I saw him and I was like, am I seeing him? Like, cause I'd been drinking a lot that day. And I was like, am I actually seeing him? Like, am I like having, what, what's happening? What's happening? And then like he was walking and then I saw him again and I was like, oh shit. And just sort of without even thinking, like I went up to him and I like, jabbed him with like a couple of fingers in the side and he turned around and I was like, hi, I think he said, oh shit. <laughs> he was like, can you give me a second? I'm talking. And I was like, I can't actually, I'm leaving. Um, and he was like, where are you going? And I was like, my plane is tonight. Like I just called my Uber and I've got to walk to my car. And so he was like, okay, I'll walk with you. And so he walked me down the street. And my girls were with me. They were walking behind me. Are we being totally transparent? We're being totally transparent? Okay. So I told him, hold on. I've got to get my girls. I went to them and I was like, my ex-husband is here. And my girl was having a conversation with this dude. And he like whipped his head around and was like, when's the last time you saw him? And I was like, at the divorce proceedings. And he said, okay, when's the last time you spoke to him? And I said, at the divorce proceedings. And he was like, oh shit. And he said, okay, this happened to me with my ex-wife. How you playing it? And I was like, nah, I think I'm, I think I'm good. He was like, steady, just be steady. No sudden moves, no outbursts, nothing crazy. Steady. You got it? And I was like, got it. He was like, what we say? Steady, steady. So my girls are like, are you good? What do we need to do? Do we need to like run interference? Like what was happening? And I was like, nope, we just going to walk up the street. And so they were like, all right, bet. No sudden moves. Everybody steady. So go back. He's waiting for me on the corner. We walk up the street. I won't replay you the conversation just out of respect for what that was when it was something. But he said some things that like really not upset me, but it kind of just made me a little sad. I asked about the kids. I don't think most people knew that I was a stepmom. He has twins, a boy and a girl. I met them when they were five and they're 16 now. And I was unable to keep a relationship with them just because of how everything went down with us. Like I was very upset about the, the kids situation and my mom was like, you know, here's the thing. Those aren't your kids. Those are his kids and they have a mom. 
you his ex-wife you're not their mom no more that was a very um hard thing to accept he told me that they asked about me which like they broke my heart he said some other things which i was like did you really just say that out loud that's a lot he saw I had braces and he was like, but your teeth weren't fucked up. And I was like, yeah, but there was like this late 30s shift and I'm trying to explain or whatever. And he was like, let me see. And so like, I smiled and he was like, I feel like I could do this with you or whatever. He's like, smile bigger. Let me see. So like literally he bends down and he's like all in my teeth, right? Like looking at whatever. And it was like the most normal thing in the world. Cause like he once been my husband, but it's like, we did this weird thing where it was like, we switched between speaking to each other, like very, like very formally, like almost like strangers, like almost like people on a first date, like trying not to say the wrong thing and make a great first impression. But then also like, like people who knew each other intimately and were like in a relationship for on, and we're in a relationship for eight years and fucking married. But it was just like, it was just like this pinging between like, like the intimacy and the formality and the intimacy and the formality. Like it was just, it was a complete mind fuck. So he walked me to my car and he asked if he could call me sometime. And I told him, I was like, you know what? And I was like, you can. I was like, um, you got to do it from like a, a different number. Cause like the ones I was like, all the ones that I had like are blocked. And he said, okay. And I told him, and I was like, I'm quite honest with you. Like I've forgiven you for everything that happened during the marriage. Cause like you weren't happy. I wasn't happy. And you apologized for that. Like, you know, the night before I left and you drove me home. So I wouldn't have to take that drive home. And I will always appreciate you for doing that for me. I feel like it was a last act of, of, um, of love. But I was like, the shit you pulled during the divorce, that never ending, draw it out, like torture her for as long as possible. And I was like, I don't know if I can ever forgive you for that. So that's where we left it. I got in the car, closed the door and like everybody was silent. And then like the girl in the middle was like, the, my friend in the middle told the driver, she's like, drive, 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 drive. And so like, you know, he drove off and then we were all like, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the get back to Manhattan in my Uber and my ex, the boyfriend is waiting for me at the hotel. It's like, you okay? Like you, you good? He was like, you been drinking? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, how was Brooklyn? And I was like, it was good. <laughs> my fucking life. <sighs> anyway, we are supposed to be talking about Howard University and their sketchy ass situation. Cause there's a bunch, there's a student protest going on over their living conditions, which are deplorable. There are mice and rats and roaches and mold that is making students sick involved. That is an ongoing story. I think I'll probably have more and better details next week. So do you mind if we save it for then? I um, You can't tell because I'm editing it, but the amount of talking that I'm doing is uh, it's upsetting my throat and I'm coughing really, really bad right now. So I want to rest my voice and I want to get back in the bed so that I can be at my best tomorrow. Sorry. So that is the podcast for this week. We'll talk again on Tuesday. God willing, I'll be feeling much better. Thanks as always for listening to Ratchet and Respectable. If you have not picked up your merch, for Don't Waste Your Pretty, there's still some available on the site. There's the mugs, there's the tees, there's the hoodies, DemetriaLLucas.com. And then the Ratchet and Respectable merch, it's coming soon. All right. We'll speak again next week. Have an amazing weekend. Bye. Bye.